Greetings, survivors and friends. Shadow Franks here once more with a roundup of Rust's new underwater update, along with all the important changes that came in at the last minute. But first, make sure you're subscribed and join the Ring a Ding Ding Club. Yeah, I just made that up. Wouldn't want to miss any content, though, would you? So, this Thursday past saw the maiden voyage of Rust's long anticipated underwater update, bringing some much needed extra depth. To the ocean environment. No longer is a trip to the seaside about as interesting as filing your tax return in a sensory deprivation tank. Now the drink contains so much life it could give a probiotic yogurt a run for its money. Except the yogurt doesn't usually try to turn your leg into a flute. For a full rundown of the main selling points from this patch, I'd heartily recommend you watch last week's update vid, because I'm not going to repeat myself all over again. Instead, here I'm going to concentrate more on what has been subject to change since. First, the water itself is more dynamic. As well as the shoals of non-interact withable fish, you'll notice it becomes darker the deeper you go, and there are other subtle changes, such as the shore wetness effect no longer extending under the water, underwater explosions are new, and shark bites leave behind clouds of blood. This project isn't finished yet, though, and according to the team, you should expect more improvements in the future, but just think how far we've come since Legacy's Ocean of Death Liquid. Ah, memories. Tune in next month for Rust in Space! <laughs> just kidding. Less. In the meantime, instead of DS9, we've got DSV, and the main pressure to venture where it's wetter comes from the underwater labs that we looked at last week. There are less per map now, roughly half as many as at first, with six spawning on a default sized one. Vending machines were removed from them, so no more deep sea retail therapy. You'll find mics in some rooms so you can make important station wide announcements. The dwellers here now palette swap versions of their train loving cousins, and it's also worth noting mountable toilets give 100% comfort. Must be quilted. TP. You'll notice that the map now has a couple of extra knobs and whistles with a level selector section on the right hand side, very handy for scoping out the train tunnels and labs without having to physically go there. You can also lock the map to the level you're looking at. Submarines were improved upon, the sonar on the duo is now functional with blips showing the locations of other subs and moon pools. These will show up as small red blips but will turn into a big green blip when you've lined yourself up just right. There's a red thingy moving towards the green thingy. I think we're the green thingy. You don't have the same luxury in the solo sub, of course, as the interior is minimalist. However, you can now reach the exterior fuel tank from inside if you look behind you. I mean, how does that work? Is your arm really long and thin enough to go through the hatch seal without letting water in? What about the jars of low grade? Ouch, my head hurts. I demand the utmost realism from my reality-bending survival games. Subs now decay at the same rate as boats, and if they're kept indoors and not in deep water, they won't decay at all. You can buy torpedoes from the boat seller at the fishing villages. They can be researched for 75 scrap each and crafted at a level 2 workbench for one metal pipe and 30 gunpowder a pop. Plus, you'll also find them on the level 2 tech tree at the end, just past HV rockets. When we tested these on stream last week, they were doing enough damage to structures that four of them could take out a stone wall. I said that would change, and it did. Now they only do about two damage to bases. Back at the large fishing village, just as I predicted last week also, a new vendor has opened up here selling diving gear, worms and fishing rods. Fishing rods are now cheaper to craft anyway, being just two rope instead of ten as previously. Plus, when harvesting plants, you will now stand a chance to also pick up worms and grubs, with a double chance if harvesting them from player planted plants. Mmm, a tasty bonus protein snack. However, thems is rather salty. Again, not sure how that works, but salty grubs. Along with the new fish mentioned last week, there are now also catfish. Different fish have different conditions for catching, including bait value, water type, water depth, and location. Catfish and perch, for instance, are only available in rivers, and orange roughies can now only be found in moon pools. Oh, and junk doesn't fight back anymore, because there's nothing more disconcerting than a skull that's trying to swim away from you. Well, apart from one that's swimming towards you, I guess. After last week's flying sharks, they now run smoother than a velvet penguin on a Teflon water slide. Also, for everyone who kept leaving comments like, Ugh, guess me no go in water now. All water now, too dangerous. They only have a chance to spawn around dive sites, so think of them as being bitier junk pile scientists of the sea. They now have 100 HP instead of 20, and when killed, can be harvested for raw fish, fat, bone, cloth, and leather. I do think 
think they should accumulate items from players they kill in their stomachs and become swimming lucky dip loot containers, though that would be both fun and realistic. Oh, and a convo related to them that server owners might like to write down is simple shark dot disable, which should be self-explanatory. Hey, who you calling simple? Slant you. The spear gun can't be used on land anymore. Both the gun and spears are workbench level one items that can be researched for 20 scrap each, and you'll find them on the level one tech tree just below the kayak. I see they fixed the spelling mistake on J eggs. Oh, hi grammar horse. This is correct, and you're still alive. So the does that mean you've found another? Well, it's just that the refinery tells you to put ore inside, but you don't put ore inside, just oil, because it's a refinery. Oh dear, yes, that's not right. You could say it's awful. Right, that's it, I'm going. In other news, the loot in underwater crates should be a bit better, and now they only take six seconds to untie instead of eight. Wow, boom boxes don't decay anymore, which is nice. Small signs can be stuck to deployables. All those wiring quality of life improvements I've already covered are all in. You can copy paste phone numbers from the directory and beneath the fret rancid lins there are now separate bypass tunnels at stations that can be accessed via these maintenance room doors. There's no loot down here at the moment but from now on this is where work carts will be spawning. It's also a handy place to duck into if you're being pursued, I guess. The next Twitch drops are in September. They've switched to every other month now, and as mentioned, all streamer drops going forward will switch to being general drops for the last 24 hours of each campaign, because, you know, just, you know, just in case, like, whatever. Ugh, what about Happis Island? Where Happis Island? Everyone always asks where Happis Island, not how Happis Island. I've been asked this definitely more than once or twice recently, and as far as I can tell, it's still being worked on, but due to being a big task to bring it up to backport standards and the underwater environment being a priority lately, I think that explains the delay, and hopefully work will continue on it soon. Um, sorry I can't give you any better info, but I'll let you know what's happening. Happisoning? with it when I find out more. In the meantime, perhaps I can distract you with something shiny. Gravy Island slash Gravis Island, whatever, the winner of the map making competition launched on some servers this week. If you want to see what it's all about, watch my video on it. Facepunch did pull a sneaky on us and slightly changed the servers it was on at the last minute, much to the chagrin of those who it turned out had been farming PPs on the wrong server. <laughs> <clears throat> the map is now running on Facepunch EU Smalls 1, 3, and 6, US Small 4, and AU Happis. Additionally, Rustoria will be hosting one EU and one US Gravis Island server. As to plans for making it available for the public after this current stint, that's still TBC, as far as I know. Right, follow me on Twitch for weekly streamage, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Discord, or my Steam group to stay in the loop on my content, and support the channel directly either through Patreon, like these fantastic chaps on the right, or by grabbing yourself a subject to change mug or something. I shall catch you all soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. This video is powered by AWDIT's producer range of workstation PCs, available now at awdit.co.uk. There's a red thingy moving towards the green thingy. I think we're the green thingy.